Now, in the past few years, you've heard a lot of statements that sound like, we must not raise boys as boys and girls as girls, because we just can't be sure that kids actually have the sex assigned to them at birth. You've heard that some people are men in women's bodies or women in men's bodies. You may even have heard that if you're a straight dude and you don't want to have sex with a trans woman, meaning a biological male, this makes you gay. You have every right to not sleep with anybody that you don't want to sleep with including trans people. The reality is a lot of trans women look identical to cisgender women, so straight men are going to be attracted to them. They may not want to have sex with them once they find out they're trans, but that does not change the fact that they were initially attracted to them. That's all we're trying to say. Bro, chill, 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 pop, 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 pop. Yo, why she just <laughs> <explosive> like that? <laughs> the simple reality is that the human species is sexually dimorphic. Sex is binary. We come in two brands, male and female. Then he goes on to say that sex is binary, but not exactly, Ben Shapiro. <laughs> According to biologists and a variety of other scientists, sex is not at all binary. Most humans do fall on either the male end of the spectrum or the female end of the spectrum, but that does not change the fact that sex is a spectrum. Intersex people are individuals born with physical sex markers, such as genitalia, hormones, gonads, or chromosomes that are neither clearly male nor female. The existence of intersex people shows that there are not just two sexes and the lines between the sexes can be blurry. The sex spectrum is the concept of a continuum of people with sexes ranging from people with typical male physiology to people with typical female physiology. There are certainly people who have anomalous genetic conditions like Klinefelter syndrome, in which a person has two X chromosomes and a Y chromosome and in whom breast development looks female while male genitalia are present. Bro, there's a couple of guys who are looking for the people born with that syndrome right now, bro. <laughs> they said one in 5,000, that's good enough odds for me. Bro. <laughs> now the presence of abnormal development does not mean that sex is a spectrum. To suggest otherwise, it would be the same thing as saying that because one child every few thousand is born with three toes, this means that the number of toes in the human being is a spectrum. It literally does. <laughs> yes, if you want to get all technical about it, the number of toes that a human can be born with is a spectrum. Just because five toes is the typical amount that people are born with does not mean that there isn't a range of number of toes. Hey, chill, 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 chill. There hold is hold a hold hold range pause, of pause. possibilities. And that's uh, I don't know if I agree with that one. It's quantitative yeah. measuring and then there's qualitative measuring. Transgenderism is more qualitative. That's what a spectrum is, a range of possibilities. <laughs> you used to classify something or suggest that it can be classified in terms of its position on a scale between two extreme or opposite points. Just because most people land on one side or the other side of the spectrum, or even most of the time on one specific point of the spectrum, does not negate the fact that it is indeed a spectrum. All reproduction is rooted in the presence of sexual dimorphism. To pretend otherwise is biologically nonsensical. Trans women, like myself, understand that there are differences between us and cisgender women. We're not arguing with you. That's why, to end a conversation on transgenderism, just ask for a simple, non-self-referential definition of the terms man and woman. When I say non-self-referential, I mean, you can't say, I feel like a woman, therefore I am a woman. For advocates of biology, the answer for what is woman or what is man is simple. You can look at chromosomes, SRY genes, reproductive systems, verifiable answers to the question. Again, I clarify this in literally all of my videos when I'm reacting to people like this, but they just don't get it. The terms man and woman dictate gender. According to the World Health Organization, gender interacts with, but is different from sex, which refers to the biological and physiological characteristics such as chromosomes, hormones, and reproductive organs. Gender is defined again by the World Health Organization as the characteristics of women, men, girls, and boys that are socially constructed. This includes norms, behaviors, and roles associated with being a woman, man, girl, or boy, as well as relationships with each other. It refers to a person's deeply felt internal and individual experience of gender, which may or may not correspond to the person's physiology or designated sex at birth. So no, Ben, I don't know what biologists you're talking to, but that's not what biologists say. The consensus is that being a man or being a woman is not at all defined by your chromosomes, by your SRY gene, or by your reproductive systems. Being a man is to be a member of the gender that is typically associated with the male sex. Being a woman is to be a member of the gender that is typically associated with the female sex. Sex, gender. They're different. She's saying that we identify with gender, not sex. I think that's the point she's trying to get at. Her sex might be male, but if I were to see her in person, I would treat her as a female, which yeah. is her gender, but I'm not treating her as a male, which is her sex. For From a doctor's standpoint, doctors would operate off of sex, not gender. You're a male, you're predisposed to prostate cancer, you can get yourself checked. At that point, it's like, 
Man, forget about all that other stuff. Keep me alive. Keep it objective. Like, do what you have to do. Keep me alive. For advocates of the position that some biological men are women, or vice versa, there is no standard that can be applied. A man can become a woman, or a woman a man, at any time, without any stable definition of man or woman whatsoever. I literally just defined it for you, Ben. We have definitions, you're just not listening. It is simply ridiculous to suggest that if a boy is effeminate, he's actually a girl. Or that if a girl is masculine, she might actually be a boy. But this is what gender theorists argue. No, it's not. It's literally not what we argue. Again, this is a straw man argument. If anything, I would argue that the left is much more accepting of men being feminine and still being a man or women being masculine and still being a woman. Remember that time that you said that Harry Styles was no longer a man because he was wearing a dress? The origins of the gender identity movement lie with a professor of medical psychology at Johns Hopkins in the 1960s. His name was John Money. Here we go. Here we go. After twin boys were born, and after a botched circumcision destroyed one boy's penis, that boy was raised as a girl. Bruh, I'll be so tight. If some doctor did me dirty nah, like that, bro, bro I'll be so nah, bro. tight. Bro, that child was just born into a situation. I botched something like that. By the time that boy was a teenager, the boy felt extraordinary discomfort because he was biologically male, and his parents told him the truth. Quick pause, I'm gonna let him finish. He did not feel this extraordinary discomfort because he was biologically male. He felt this discomfort because his gender identity was a boy. His theory was children could identify as members of the opposite sex, and that radical surgery was the proper solution. That inside, these kids were members of the opposite sex in reality, and that surgery would merely make their bodies align with their identity. Money claims that, quote, the gender identity gate is open at birth for a normal child, no less than for one born with unfinished sex organs, and would stay that way for at least a year. So in other words, you could have a full biological boy with finished sex organs, and his gender identity was still open. Brains and bodies were considered in direct opposition, completely separate from one another. Ben, you're so wrong, dude. John Money did not believe that David Ryman was really a girl on the inside. He believed that gender was only socially influenced, meaning you could raise any child to be any gender you want if you raise them that way. This Reimer case perfectly shows that gender identity, which is different than gender as a concept, gender as a whole, it perfectly shows that gender identity is innate and unchangeable. Reimer was born as a cisgender male, meaning he was born physically male and his gender identity was a boy. After his botched circumcision, Money said that they could raise him as a girl, but he was unsuccessful due to the fact that you cannot change somebody's gender identity. He was unsuccessful just like it is always going to be unsuccessful to try to change a trans woman's identity from a girl to a boy. That boy who was raised as a girl, they were raised as a girl but they still felt like a male but because on the inside they truly felt that way i agree with that i believe that's a thing but my whole thing right here is the flexibility of that decision with this case you can prove exactly why that gender identity might might be that way but with any other scenario where you can't necessarily prove why someone might have a certain gender identity people can literally change their mind whenever they feel like they i mean they are going off how they feel but i don't think it's something that i don't know well actually that some people are like that some people go back and forth. Gender fluidity is like something like that. If gender dysphoria hasn't been proven. People are just going off of like how they feel. That's that's a problem. It's gonna bring a lot of confusion, in my opinion, at least, especially to the kids. If gender is a meaningless social construct created by society, why does it matter more than sex, which is actual real biology? And why is gender more real than biology itself? Why would anyone need to change his or her body in order to align with gender, a social construction, when gender and sex are completely separate in the first place? I just got like attacked by a piece of fuzz, sorry. <laughs> He's like, why is gender more real than biology, which is actually real? First of all, I just want to quickly point out again that Shapiro and other conservatives like Shapiro love to like intentionally mix up the concepts of gender and gender identity to confuse the viewers. So just keep that in mind. They are completely different concepts. Gender as a whole is socially constructed. Gender identity or who you perceive yourself as is innate and unchangeable. Once again, this is another straw man argument. Nobody is saying that gender is more real than biology. Nobody. However, just like you pointed out with the John Money case, gender identity is unchangeable, unlike biology. Sure, you may still have the same chromosomes or the same reproductive functions or the same SRY gene or whatever you want to say, but it is definitely possible to manipulate your outward appearance to more closely resemble the sex that matches your gender identity. Gender dysphoria, which is what we're talking about here, is a serious and tragic disorder. It is also extremely rare. According to the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual 5th edition, those who had received a diagnosis of gender identity disorder or transsexualism and were seeking hormone treatment and or surgery 
represented just 0.005 to 0.014% for males and 0.002 to 0.003% for females. Those stats are now rising dramatically. We have that big announcement from an Oscar-nominated actor announcing he is transgender. Elliot Page came out publicly with a post about his identity. People suffering from gender dysphoria, which, in its non-politicized definition, means the persistent belief that you are a member of the opposite sex, have a tragically high suicidal ideation and depression rate. That suicidal ideation rate remains tragically high after surgical and hormonal treatment. He's like, the, the rate of being transgender is increasing and it's becoming more popular, but then literally gives us an example of why that's happening. It's because of that representation provided by people like Elliot Page and the increased acceptance of the trans community in society. Not because it's a trend and it's a fad and people just want to be trendy. As for the high suicide rates, the studies show that they are only that high when that trans individual has their gender identity rejected, which is exactly what Ben is doing. If you really care about those rates being high and you wanna, you know, help people, stop making videos like this that are literally hurting us. It's not up to the world to conform to what you want individually. As a gender dysphoric individual, you seek the, psych the psychologist to help you find ways to accommodate to your life in a less distressful manner. The way you do that is to change the way you view your surroundings. People not calling you by your gender pronouns isn't what's killing you. People making videos about transgender ideology being false isn't what's killing you. It's you, your perception of it. That's what's killing you. You know, I'm not trying to be insensitive, but this is your problem. However you want to deal with it, that's up to you. It's not up to the world to try to accommodate to your problem. If you have a problem, go talk to your doctor about that and you can figure that out together. But suffering from a mental disorder does not change your underlying sex any more than believing that you are Napoleon Bonaparte makes you Napoleon Bonaparte. How many straw man arguments are we gonna get in this one video? Like it's 10 minutes long. Trans people are fully aware that having gender dysphoria does not make you the opposite sex. It means that our gender identity does not match our sex. So therefore we try to change our bodies to more closely resemble our unchanging gender identity. Does that make sense? Am I breaking it down small enough for you? Now, none of this means that anybody suffering from gender dysphoria ought to be mistreated. Anybody with any sort of disorder ought to be treated with nothing but sympathy and care. But this does mean that a society that seeks to propagandize to children that they can switch their gender is both lying to kids and doing them psychological harm in the process. I hate this phrasing, switching your gender. Nobody switches their gender. A trans girl's gender identity has always been a girl, whether they knew that or not. What he's really trying to say here is nobody is transgender and telling people that you can possibly be transgender is causing psychological damage, which again, is not supported by the data. Surprise, surprise. This study, which again will be linked down below, I gotta teach Ben Shabira how to link studies. I don't know if he knows how. It says, we identified 55 studies that consist of primary research on this topic, of which 93% found that gender transition improves the overall well being of transgender people, while 7% report mixed or null findings. We found no studies concluding that gender transition causes overall harm. You're just making that up. If anybody's propagandizing some bullshit, it's you, Ben Shapiro. With the new Equality Act, the motion is adopted. The Biden administration and the Democratic Party are seeking to promote the idea that any institution that doesn't mimic these lies has to be destroyed. And the Equality Act is a non-discrimination law. These people cannot, they're just like, I want to discriminate. No organization is allowed to discriminate against trans people. That's what he's complaining about. He's like, well, my church should be allowed to discriminate against them. So this Equality Act is pretty bad. In the end, a man claiming to be a woman is making an unsustainable claim. He can't even know what it is like to be a woman because he is not one. A man with surgeries and hormone treatment does not become a woman, nor does a man who simply declares himself a woman. All of this is insane propaganda that is being propagated for political purposes. So, no, a man cannot become a woman or a woman a man. This final claim that he makes that it's all for political purposes and, you know, being transgender and this whole trans ideology is just politically motivated is just so ridiculous to me because these bills, like the Equality Act, are saving transgender people's lives. But what's the point of your video, Ben? To defend the biology that doesn't agree with you? No, no, I don't think it is. I think it's actually to appeal to your right wing, science denying, transphobic viewers. Whenever we make laws like specifically directed towards transgender community, it just feels like other people are being ignored and they are being put on a little pedestal. And I think the better approach will be to have the transgender individuals see specific professional therapy rather than try to seek some sort of political reform to help them and their movement. Yeah, but I mean, the political has to come into effect when it comes to like, for example, in the equality bill, it says like pharmacies can't turn away or like uh, 
the other places. So, I mean, in places where the business that is necessary, that you need is a necessity is kind of turning you away. You kind of need to get involved in the laws. And I, I think that's mainly what they're focusing on. Like they're saying that the rates have increased. I don't think the rates have increased. I just think that people have been in the closet about it. So people are just coming out of the closet with it because it's more accepted. I see what you're trying to say. Um, I'm not disproving gender dysphoria in any way, shape or form. My whole thing is how it affects our society. I believe there's legitimate people that have gender dysphoria, but I also believe that there's people that are acting. They don't really actually have gender dysphoria. The people that are acting like it are going to increase and that's going to cause a, um, problems and issues because people can change their mind whenever they feel like. You oh, understand? I, in that regard, I would say like to help the people who are experiencing these things, the education on that in and of itself won't do any harm. 20 years ago, if no, no one knew what that was. Everybody could just look at a transgender person and be like, oh, you're just pretending. Like, why are you, why are you being weird? Why can't you just fit into the norm? Today, we understood a little bit more, uh, at least about like gender and gender identity. 